Top 10 Fake Artworks and Artifacts Exhibited in Museums Workmanship imitation is a genuine threat historical centers need to battle with. Sometimes, a gallery winds up with a phony curio that can wind up being in plain view for various years before they understand it is a phone. For the falsifiers, the excessive cost labels connected to these fakes are frequently enough impetuses to continue making forgeries. Forgers regularly go to extraordinary lengths to trick exhibition halls into purchasing their work. A few fakes are acceptable to such an extent that antiquarians and archaeologists struggle disclosing to them separated from the genuine article. Numerous galleries have succumbed to counterfeiters including the celebrated Louvre, which showed a phony craftsmanship for quite a long while without acknowledging it. Number 10. The Three Etruscan Warriors. In 1933, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, otherwise known as the Met in New York City, added three new bits of craftsmanship to its display. They were the models of three champions from the old Etruscan human advancement. The vendor, a workmanship seller named Pietro Stettina, asserted the figures were made in the 5th century BC. Italian archaeologists were the first to raise worries that the sculptures could be falsifications. Notwithstanding, the historical center keepers would not regard the admonition since they accepted they had gotten the fine arts at a deal and didn't have any desire to lose them to another museum. Other archaeologists Later noticed that the sculptures had unordinary shapes and sizes for works of art made at their time. The body parts were likewise etched at inconsistent extents, and the whole assortment had little harm. The exhibition hall just found reality in 1960, when excavator Joseph V. Respectable reproduced test sculptures utilizing similar procedures as the Etruscans and established that the sculptures in the Met couldn't have been made by them. Investigations uncovered that Stettina was important for a bigger gathering of counterfeiters that had plotted to make the sculptures. The team copied the sculptures from collections held by several museums, including the Met itself. One of the warriors was copied from a picture of a Greek statue in a book from the Berlin Museum, the head of another warrior was copied from the drawing on a real Etruscan vase held by the Met. The sculptures also had unequal body parts because they were too big for the studio, forcing the forges to reduce the size of some parts. One of the sculptures was also missing an arm because the forges couldn't decide on a pose for said arm. Number 09 The Persian Mummy in 2000, Pakistan, Iran, and Afghanistan nearly occupied with a discretionary line over the mummy and casket of her unidentified 2,600-year-old princess. The mummy, frequently alluded to as the Persian Mummy, was found when Pakistani cops assaulted a home in Karen in the wake of getting a hint that the proprietor was wrongfully attempting to sell antiquities. The proprietor was Sada Wali Riki, who was attempting to offer the mummy to a unidentified purchaser for £35 million. Riki guaranteed he had discovered the mummy in final resting place after a seismic tremor. Iran before long guaranteed responsibility for mummy, taking into account that Riki's town was directly at its outskirt. The Taliban, who controlled Afghanistan at that point, later joined the quarrel to challenge responsibility for mummy. The mummy was shipped off Pakistan's National Museum and put in plain view. Nonetheless, a few archaeologists found that few pieces of the casket were excessively present day. What's more, there was no proof that any of the clans in Iran, Pakistan, and Afghanistan ever embalmed their dead. Further investigation uncovered that the mummy was really the remaining parts of a 21-year elderly person who may well have been a homicide casualty. It was shipped off a mortuary, and police captured Riki and his family. 
Number 08 Dead Sea Scroll Fragments The Dead Sea Scrolls are a gathering of manually written parchments containing Jewish strict content. They were written in the harsh region of 2000 years back and are among the most seasoned recorded compositions of Hebrew scriptural sections. The vast majority of the parchments and pieces are put away at the Israel Museum in Jerusalem. While a couple are in the possession of private gatherers and museums, this remembers the Museum of the Bible for Washington, D.C., which had five parts of the looks in plain view. Notwithstanding, that changed in 2018, when the sections were uncovered to be fabrications. The stratagem was found after the historical center sent the sections to Germany for analysis. The exhibition hall sent the looks for assessment after specialists raised the caution that they may have been fakes. These worries were first raised a long time before the exhibition hall opened in November 2017. Theorists guarantee that the gallery burned through large number of dollars to procure the phony parchment pieces. In any case, that stays unverified, taking into account that the historical center isn't talking. Number 07 Several artworks at the Brooklyn Museum in 1932 The Brooklyn Museum got 926 showstoppers from the home of Colonel Michael Friedsam, who had passed on a year sooner. The fine arts were a blend of works of art, adornments, woodworks, and stoneware from Old Rome, the Chinese King Line, and the Renaissance. Colonel Friedsam talented the gallery the workmanship depending on the prerequisite that they got consent from his home prior to selling or decommissioning any of it. That condition turned into an issue many years after the fact. When the exhibition hall found that 229 of the craftsmanships were forgeries, the Brooklyn Museum couldn't decommission the workmanship on the grounds that the remainder of Colonel Friedsam's relatives passed on 50 years back. The exhibition hall can't discard them, either. In light of the fact that the Association of American Museums has exacting standards controlling the capacity and removal of workmanship by part museums, in 2010, the Brooklyn Gallery moved toward a court to permit it to decommission these fabrications. As indicated by the appeal submitted to the court, the exhibition hall would spend an underlying $403,000 to outfit a distribution center to store the ancient rarities if the court denied its solicitation. At that point it would spend another $286,000 every year on lease and laborers to think about the fine arts. Number 06 The Henlein Pocket Watch Dwindle Henlein was a locksmith and designer who lived in Germany somewhere in the range of 1485 and 1542. We probably won't know him. Yet we as a whole know and utilize his development, the watch. Henlein concocted the watch when he supplanted the hefty loads utilized in timekeepers with a lighter fountainhead which permitted him make more modest tickers. Timekeepers were made by locksmiths and metal workers at the time. One of Henlein's alleged early manifestations has been held at the Germanisches National Museum in Germany since 1897. The pocket watch looks like a little tin and fits in the palm of one's hand. In any case, it turned into the focal point of a discussion not long after it was added to the exhibition hall's collection. Several students of history guaranteed the supposed Henlein watch was a phony and not a unique. This was despite the fact that the mark in within back front of the watch announced it to have been made by Peter Henlein in 1510. A 1930 report expressed that the mark was added a very long time after the watch was as far as anyone knows built. The specialists arrived at their decision subsequent to verifying that the mark went over, rather than under, the scratch marks inside the back cover. Later tests uncovered that most pieces of the watch were fabricated in the 19th century, showing it very well may be a falsification. In any case, Different specialists recommend the parts were made during an endeavor to fix the watch. 
Number 05 Almost Everything at San Francisco's Mexican Museum In 2012, the Mexican Museum in San Francisco accomplished offshoot status with the Smithsonian Institution. The status permits the exhibition hall to acquire and advance works of art from more than 200 accomplice historical centers and foundations with the partner status. Nonetheless, the Smithsonian requires park galleries to validate their assortments before they can begin advancing or acquiring artworks in 2017. The Mexican Museum found that loan 83 of the initial 2000 fine arts it assessed were legitimate. This was disturbing, taking into account that the exhibition hall has 16,000 works of art in its assortment. Specialists gauge that a big part of the gallery's stock is faked. Some of the imitations were intentionally made to be made look like unique, while others were initially planned as improvements. Some weren't connected to Mexican culture by any means. The tremendous measure of imitations isn't unexpected. Taking into account that the historical center got a large portion of its assortments from contributors and hadn't tried to affirm their validness. Number 04 The Armana Princess In 2003, the Bolton, Manchester, city gathering chose to get some new craftsmanships for their neighborhood historical center. They made do with a probably 3,300-year-old sculpture called the Amama Princess, which portrays a relative of Pharaoh Tutankhamun of Old Egypt. The vendors of the sculpture guaranteed it was exhumed from an Egyptian site. This case was sponsored by the British Museum, which found no indications of treachery subsequent to looking at the sculpture. Fulfilled, the Bolton City Committee paid £440,000 for the sculpture, which went in plain view at the museum. A few years after the fact, the Bolton Museum found that the British Museum wasn't right. The sculpture was a phony, the craftsmanship of Sean Greenhalgh, a scandalous counterfeiter who made phony works of art which he offered to historical centres as firsts. In a bit of incongruity, Greenhalgh lived in Bolton and had made the figure there. His guardians, George and Olive Greenhalgh, went about as his sales reps and offered the frauds to the historical centres. In 2007, Sean was condemned to four years and eight months in prison for his wrongdoing. His folks got suspended prison terms as far as concerns them. Number 03 A Golden Crown at the Louvre During the 1800s, two men reached goldsmith Israel Rushomovsky in the present Odessa, Ukraine, to commission a Greek-style gold crown as a present for a classicist companion. In truth, the men had no prehistorian companion and simply needed to sell the crown as a unique craftsmanship from old Greece. Shapshir al Hokman, the more tricky of the couple, asserted the crown was a blessing from a Greek ruler to the Lord of Scythia at some point in the 3rd century BC. A few British and Austrian exhibition halls turned down proposals to buy the crown. Notwithstanding, Hockman discovered karma when the Louvre bought it for 200,000 francs. Some archaeologists raised worries that the crown could be phony not long after it went on show at the Louvre. Be that as it may, nobody tuned into them since they weren't French. The Louvre considered their articulations a demonstration of enviously since they most likely needed the crown for their own museums. The archaeologists were legitimized in 1903, when a man named Lifshitz, a companion who had seen Rushomovsky make the crown, educated Rushomovsky that his work was being shown as a unique at the Louvre. Rushomovsky went to France with a generation to demonstrate he truly made the crown. The disclosure was awful information for the Louvre and uplifting news for Rushomovsky, who hit moment acclaim. After a century, the Israel Museum acquired the crown from the Louvre and showed it as a unique fine art of Rushomovsky.
Number 02 Over half of the paintings at Etienne Terrace Museum The Etienne Terrace Museum is a generally secret historical center in Elm, France. It has a place with the city of Elm and displays crafted by Etienne Terrace, a French craftsman who was brought into the world in Elm in 1857. In 2018, the gallery added 80 new artistic creations to its assortment. Nonetheless, Things immediately went south when a history specialist contracted to help mastermind the new works of art found that around 60% of the whole historical center's assortment were forgeries. The antiquarian had no trouble in deciding the craftsmanships to be fakes. His gloved hand cleared the mark off one artistic creation in a solitary stroke. A few compositions likewise contained structures that had not been worked at the time Terrace was alive. Further examination uncovered that 82 of the 140 artworks held at the gallery were forgeries. 9. The city chamber had bought the majority of the artistic creations somewhere in the range of 1990 and 2010. The fabrications were moved to the neighborhood police headquarters while police opened an examination. Number 01 Everything at the Museum of Art Fakes The Museum of Art Fakes is a genuine gallery devoted to workmanship falsifications. Situated in Vienna, Austria, the exhibition hall just gathers counterfeit curios and craftsmanships. Portions of its assortments incorporates pages from a journal as far as anyone knows possessed by Adolf Hitler. In truth, the journal was fashioned by one Konrad Kajau. The historical center arranges its assortments into falsifications proposed to imitate the style of a more popular craftsman. Fabrications planned to be sold as beforehand unfamiliar work of art of a well-known craftsman. And frauds expected to be made look like firsts of effectively celebrated artworks. The gallery incorporates a classification for fine arts. It thinks about reproductions. Imitations are made by craftsmen after the demise of the first craftsman. They were frequently named and sold accordingly. Never having been professed to be originals, the Museum of Art Fakes likewise commits some display space to notorious counterfeiters like Tom Keating, who made more than 2,000 phony craftsmanships during his lifetime. Keating purposely made mistakes in his specialty so they could be uncovered as phony long after he had been paid. He called these conscious blunders time bombs. The gallery additionally displays crafted by Edgar M. Regala, who made more than 3,500 phony bits of craftsmanship which he sold as firsts. M. Regala's profession as a counterfeiter finished after he got a two-year sentence for craftsmanship fabrication. He was just delivered relying on the prerequisite that he take on another vocation that necessary him to assist specialists with uncovering counterfeit craftsmanships. Thank you watching this video. Like, share and subscribe my channel.